just a quick example showing how it could in principle be possible to use GitLab pages and environments and GitLab CI CD to generate custom reports from CI CD pipelines that could be useful to developers and operators of a GitLab project. Now, GitLab itself offers a enormous range and ever expanding range of different kinds of reports, uh, not just simple things like the test and test coverage reports that are built into merge requests, but also the more advanced capabilities like the vulnerability report with vulnerability management. And there's no replacement for the built-in reports that are driven by the database and have been sculpted and developed by our product team to meet the most common needs. But occasionally, we encounter teams that need to do something a little bit different with data inside their pipeline and want sort of a reporting mechanism. And this is just one way to think about it. It has its strengths and weaknesses, but it does use the GitLab platform in a way that I think is kind of interesting sometimes. So. This is a completely fake example. Don't expect any magic here, but uh, this is just a project. I called the project Pipeline Reporting GitLab Pages for boring name. And let me show you how, what this looks like uh, in the pipeline itself. So um, if I go into the most recent pipeline on the main branch, on the default branch here, I can see if I, I can see I've got some test jobs here. There's obviously there would be other stuff in your pipeline. I've got some test jobs here. I just threw in a fake coverage in SAS jobs. They don't really do anything at all, but you can imagine that they generate their usual reports in whatever format they are. Now, in the case of GitLab SAS, of course, that's the, the JSON report that, uh, that, that we generate, but this could be anything, generating any kind of data, essentially. And then downstream of that in a stage called report are jobs that are taking that raw data and turning it into a human consumable report format. So this is a one-time flat static reporting mechanism. This is not a dynamic you know, database business intelligence type of thing, but it is a way of getting information from this pipeline in a human digestible form. That would be either a custom script or some kind of templating language or something to generate that report. I then added a consolidate step, which consolidates all of these reports into one single directory. And in this particular case, I'm using Markdown for those reports and using MDBook, which is a Rust-based static site generator to actually generate the static site. And um, and, and that's in a, a stage I just called pre-publish. And then we use GitLab Pages to actually publish it out using a Pages job, which is the normal GitLab Pages approach. And so if I go to the Pages site here, and uh, I'm just using the kind of the default here for the pages site. And I can see this, the layout here is mostly MD books sort of default layout, but I've got my two reports here that I generated and I can click through them. And as an example, this just rendered an SVG uh, using matplotlib and Python. And this could be maybe a table and maybe using some JavaScript libraries, this could be a table where with filtering and uh, column shuffling and you know all kinds of things that you could do client side. So this there's no server here. This is flat content, but of course, in a modern browser with modern JavaScript libraries, um, a lot of pretty dynamic reporting can take place in this case. Didn't do that here. This is just an example of how it might be sort of set up and navigated. And this is all smart enough that if new reporting jobs get added in, they would just appear here in the final output. Now. This is all great, except that GitLab Pages is only really one. So this is, you could imagine this could even be a custom URL here, custom domain name. GitLab Pages only uh, only works sort of, in, there's only really one Pages site for the entire project. That's going to change soon, but for right now, GitLab Pages is really only one site for the entire project. But there's a little secret backdoor to the Pages daemon, which is that if I go back to the project here, and I go to my merge request. So I generated a merge request. What if you want to do that reporting on a merge request, right? Uh, well, I don't necessarily want to overwrite the main GitLab pages site for the whole project, but I still want to have that kind of reporting. So this is a merge request, important new feature work. And what I can see here is that the pipeline actually stopped at that static site generator job. And so it didn't try to push it out to GitLab pages and overwrite the main pages site, which is based on the default branch. Instead, it just generated the site and left it sitting there in an artifact. Now, what's great is that GitLab recently introduced browsable artifacts. So 
I can click browse, I can go to this, uh, I can go to this site here and I can actually browse it directly from the pages daemon within the merge request within the job artifact. And so this has got everything that GitLab Pages provides, except it's a really complicated URL and hard to navigate to. Uh, so this is the same report now, because I haven't changed the data, but it's the same report in, within the context of that specific merge request. Actually, it's that specific job of that specific pipeline. So, but that was a lot of clicking. That's kind of a pain in the neck. How could I actually surface that? Well, it turns out we can fake this as an environment. And so if I go back to the pipeline, so pretend I didn't do all that. Pretend I was just on the merge request. And here it's got deployed to reports slash and branch name. I gave it that environment name uh, and view app. And view app, instead of being an app in an environment in this case, because you could have other environments here, you could actually have deployed environments. View app is actually a link directly into the browsable artifact from the job within GitLab. So this is going to expire when your artifacts expire. So it's not permanent by any means, um, but that's probably good enough for a report within a merge request. So essentially we've surfaced whatever kind of data we want to and whatever kind of reporting format we want to for that particular pipeline, we've surfaced it directly at a big button that's right here on the merge request. And so this is a way, although it's static, not database driven, uh, we could take advantage of JavaScript. You could, in theory, uh, manifest any kind of report that you want to. Furthermore, you could combine that with other uses of GitLab Pages. For example, if you had actual documentation for the project that was in Pages or, uh, or uh, anything, if you're generating a full static site within Pages, we could still combine those just to just be in different parts of the site, as it were. So hope this is interesting and helpful. It's really just an idea that I've had for a while. And uh, thanks for the opportunity to, uh, to let me show this to you and to uh, give it a little go.